the simplest way to kill your belly fat. I wanted to create a plan that would allow anybody to go from 30% body fat to 15% body fat. The information I'm going to share with you here is a culmination of my decade of experience as a medical doctor, as a coach, and as a professional natural bodybuilder. The challenges that I faced myself, and I wanted to be able to make sure that anybody who watches this video who's heard all the caloric deficit, high protein diet, all this information filled society that we're living in and not seeing results, this is going to be the point where that changes for you. I'm going to show you the clients who've seen amazing results, the scientific backing behind why I'm doing and sharing what I'm sharing, and also how to apply it yourself. So even for those of you who are the more seasoned and experienced dieters who've seen their six pack before, there's going to be nuggets in here that you're going to be able to utilize yourself to finally see results. And again, this is a combination of the science and my own experience. And what I'm going to share with you here can potentially be life changing for you. Let's not waste any time and let's get straight into it. The simplest diet, I am calling it and coining it the CEO diet and I'll tell you why, but I'm also calling it the TMAD diet, the two meals a day diet. It's the diet that I found my clients enjoy the most or a good portion who are very busy. Again, with dieting, it's never a one size fits all situation. That's why I say you may be able to grab some nuggets, but let's dive into it. So here I am. I recently became a professional natural bodybuilder and what's very common and let me use this first as a preface. With fat, fat releases a hormone called leptin. And this hormone is responsible for signaling to our brain satiety. It's responsible for signaling fullness. And when you get to single digit body fat, you have very low body fat and consequently very low leptin. So it's quite normal to feel very hungry. And this is why so many bodybuilders rebound beyond finishing their show because their brain is struggling to be told that they're full. And I wanted to avoid this and I didn't want to gain fat and I was successful. I figured it out and I hacked it and I'm still in amazing shape right now, even months beyond this program that I followed. And this plan that I'm going to share with you has worked for my clients as well. The reason I'm using this client is number one, she's a lady and ladies do have a harder time being able to drop in body fat. But how this happened is her husband, John joined me first. And he saw amazing results and John gave Jasmine the inspiration to say, give it a go and work with Dr. Mike. And Jasmine got to her goal in little as three months and she managed to do it quickly. So the plan I gave her and her husband is something they can do as tech founders, even though they're very busy and that their family can follow. So this is for anybody. You have no excuses. And that was my goal when I created this. I wanted to take all the excuses away. So when you're traveling, you'll be able to follow this plan. When you're going out to eat, and you're at functions and you're meeting different clients or you're doing different work that is outside of what your usual comfort zone is of your home, you'll be able to follow this plan. So this will apply to anybody and everybody. Not only clients like Jasmine were able to see results. Look at my client, Gary, a firefighter. I contacted Gary and it's been a few months since we've worked together saying, Hey Gary, how's things going? And he's still in amazing shape at 45 years old, 5'11 as his height. So this can apply to anybody. And to give you a bit of background behind me, I'm a medical doctor and I am also a scientist. I graduated majoring in biochemistry and microbiology. So I'll be explaining some of the molecular things happening with this diet and why I decided to make this adjustment. But what's important to discuss and we'll start off is with insulin and how insulin plays a role and why I followed this diet. So I wanted to fix this hunger that I was feeling. I also wanted to double my energy. I was feeling low energy as a result of being in a caloric deficit and I was able to fix that. So, and again, I have tried everything in the book. I've done this for a decade. I've done the keto diet, paleo diet, intermittent fasting, anything you can think of, but I've tried first before I ever recommended it. So this is also a little bit of my own experience. Let's first talk about insulin and what that is. Insulin is a hormone that's produced in your pancreas and its role is to transport glucose, blood sugar, which is used for energy to the cells in your liver, in your muscle, in your brain, and into your fat cells. Insulin doesn't just play a role in glucose transport. It also plays an important role in controlling how much sugar is in your blood. It also works alongside another hormone called glucagon, which is also produced in the pancreas to help your blood sugar levels remain the same. So glucagon is responsible 
responsible for releasing sugar back into the blood so that these two hormones push and pull to have the certain range. If your blood sugar is too low, the pancreas will release glucagon, which tells the liver to produce glucose until your blood sugar levels are normalized. If your blood sugar is too high, the pancreas will release insulin, which tells fat cells to store more glucose and help lower your blood sugar back to normal levels. Now that you know the baseline, I will show you what are different things that can happen, right? Um, when things aren't working really well. But insulin also has multiple effects on different tissues of the body. So insulin is primarily produced in the beta cells of your pancreatic isolates, and it's secreted in response to glucose, sugar. You drink sugar, you're going to release insulin. In addition to food consumption, it promotes intestinal secretion of GLP-1, which acts on the beta cells to enhance insulin release. Insulin release may also be modulated by your vagus nerve. It stimulates glucose uptake and utilization in your muscle. Have an insulin spike, that glucose will also be transported into your muscle cell in the form of glycogen and into your liver as well. How does it affect fat cells? Insulin promotes lipogenesis the creation and formation of fat, and it also suppresses lipolysis, the breakdown of fat in adipose tissue. While the effect of insulin action in the brain on appetite control is known, it may also play a significant role in glucose uptake. Insulin action on the neuroprotection and cognitive functions are also well known. So now you guys see that insulin directly affects your fat cells, right? In terms of the formation and stopping the breakdown of fat. But we also need to talk about, okay, what happens when insulin doesn't function correctly? And what, are you saying, Mike, that insulin causes you to just store fat? Because one of insulin's vital roles in the body relates to fat storage, it inhibits the breakdown of fat cells and stimulates the secretion of body fat. That is, insulin tells the body to stop burning fat and store it instead. It absorbs some of the fatty acids and glucose in the blood and then it can turn it into body fat. The reason carbohydrates have gotten a bad rep over the years is because carbohydrates will raise insulin. And if you're constantly eating carbohydrates chronically, your insulin will be consistently high. But that should be a challenge on the body, right? If your body is just constantly producing insulin. And we're going to talk about that. But supposedly, because your body is always in this fat storage mode because of eating carbs, you're never going to lose weight and you're never going to be in a fat burning mode. This is a myth. So I want to put that out there first. And I'm going to show you how it's actually a balance. So here's a graph of your day-to-day, -day, 24 hours. And... Here at the top, right, where you're seeing breakfast, lunch, and dinner, that is when you're in a fed state, you're eating. And at the bottom is when you're in a fasted state, when you're not eating. So you have a meal, insulin is released. So all the food that you're eating is put into different parts into your body, into your muscle tissue, into your liver, and in excess, it's stored. As time passes and all the food energy is utilized, your body can utilize fat cells as a source of energy when you're fasted, and you can see this little dip here at the bottom, and then you have lunch, and then you go back into this insulin state, in a fed state, your body utilizes all the food as a source of energy, and you can gain some fat, and then as hours pass, you can be in a fasted state again, and you get the point, but you then go to bed and you find yourself in a fasted state. So when you find these light orange points to be more than the darker orange, right? When you're eating too much and you're more so towards the high insulin state and you're eating more than you need, you will store fat. And if you're more in a fasted state, you will burn fat. So it's all about this delicate balance and your body's controlling it. So again, at base level, with fat gain, it's more so about how much energy are you putting in compared to out versus is insulin the biggest culprit here? So it's not about how high your insulin is, it's about how much energy you're putting into your body as a result and how insulin has to respond accordingly. But there's a condition called insulin resistance. And there's a state. Insulin resistance is a condition where insulin fails to deliver glucose into the cell. And the way to think about it is now, okay, this key insulin isn't functioning optimally. It's not letting this glucose go into your cells that your body needs. This means that glucose is still in the blood and your pancreas responds by sending more insulin into the bloodstream. Because your cells aren't taking the sugar out of your blood, your blood sugar levels will remain high for much longer than usual. Eventually, the insulin hormone will manage to clear the sugar from your blood, but the process takes longer than usual and also results in more insulin being released. The way you should think about it is because insulin is released too much, the lock 
to this key becomes very rusty and your cells aren't taking it up well. And this is quite common to see. I have so many clients who experience this, including myself, and there's ways to test it, which I'll tell you about a bit later. Chronically high blood sugar can cause a lot of damage to the body and it can also cause weight gain. This is because once the liver and the muscle cells are full, any additional glucose is sent to the fat cells for storage. Again, this is why calories is king. It's always gonna be about the energy you're putting in versus the insulin, but you can find your yourself in a condition where the insulin isn't functioning properly. And we find this quite often with the clients who decide to work with us because they tried all the calorie tracking and it didn't work and we need to rectify this. But I'll tell you how I have done this and how we'll do that, right? So again, here's a nice little picture. You have a meal, let's say it's a high carb diet. You have, you're eating a muffin for breakfast. You're having something to eat out like a McDonald's, right? There's constant high blood glucose and there's a constantly high demand of insulin. Your pancreas will release insulin, but the receptors on your cells become resistant. So this blood sugar is just hanging out and your body needs to put it somewhere. And this will usually go into your fat cells. And because your cells aren't getting the glucose that it needs, your brain still thinks that, hey, we don't have enough glucose, which is usually why people struggle with appetite and cravings. So this is one of the reasons for why people are having cravings is they may be dealing with insulin resistance. Again, this is not a one size fits all scenario, but this happens. And I have felt that this has happened to me and there's a way to test it. Now, again, just to show you guys using these graphs, let's say you're, this is 24 hours here on the left side, right? You guys are seeing here. And let's say that you've had a meal and hours will pass. People usually say six to eight hours that your body will trans will translate into a fasted state. You'll be in this fat storage mode. The more you fast, the more your body will tap into fat stores as a source of energy. And you're gonna see how we're gonna utilize this with the simplest plan to kill body fat. So this is why fasting is so powerful. It's cause yes, you're eating less and your body's going to use, your body is an energy source and usually fat cells. And we're gonna make sure we don't use our muscle cells. And here's another photo of how different macronutrients affect your ability to produce insulin. Fat compared to carbohydrates doesn't stimulate your insulin as much. You'll see how I'm going to utilize this with the plan I'm about to share. Protein can stimulate insulin, not to a higher degree compared to carbohydrates. And research is even showing now that sometimes eating a fat, a high fat, high protein meal before eating carbohydrates can maintain your blood sugar levels better, which will consequently contain the amount of insulin your body produces. All right, so you'll see insulin will raise the highest with carbohydrates compared to the other macronutrients. This information is important for later, right? So you're seeing that your body's going through this constant push and pull, right? And that's why you'll see people wear glucose monitors to watch, okay, how much insulin is being released and how is my blood sugar being controlled? And again, just to show you here, what increases insulin? A high carb diet. And when I say high carb, I'm talking 200, 300. Again, this is relative from person to person. A high calorie diet frequent meals and snacking, you're sedentary, you're not moving around too much, and you're drinking a lot of empty calories. So you can see here, just carbohydrates will spike your insulin the highest. And again, I also want to mention, if you just drink, if you just have Haribos compared to a oatmeal meal, Haribos will spike your insulin much higher because it's going to get into your bloodstream much quicker because it's so processed compared to oatmeal, which takes longer to digest and break down, which will release glucose slower. This is where glycemic index comes in. You'll see that you'll also get an equal response having carbs with protein. And you'll see to a lesser degree, protein won't stimulate insulin as much. Fats will stimulate insulin the least. On the opposite end, and this is now, you guys are seeing how I'm building this plan, the simplest way. If you wanna decrease insulin, you can have a lower carb diet. So you're eating lesser carbs. You will also see that intermittent fasting, cause you're fasted, can improve your insulin levels by decreasing it more, right? Because you're not having any glucose response. And then exercising can also decrease your insulin response. And you're gonna see how we're gonna utilize one, two, three things. Again, when I coach most people, the way I like to function is we started a good amount of carbohydrates, but we're utilizing whole foods as our source of carbs, which won't spike insulin as much as to eating just junk processed foods. And over time, I will slowly bring down carbs. That's one strategy to utilize. I'm not married to any particular diet. I like using the science and what works to my benefit. So again, this is also anecdotal. This is what I've been utilizing myself in the logic. If you're feeling this lack of energy, 
you're not feeling healthy. You're having symptoms that is impacting your career, the relationship with your family, the relationship at work. You're not performing at the highest level that you possibly can. You know, there was a time in your life that you felt that there was more energy. We help you with all of these things at Sculpt by Science. These are the people that we work with. You've tried the medications. You've tried Weight Watchers, low carb, keto diet. You've tried intermittent fasting. You've tracked your calories. You've done surgeries. You've done the Zempic and none of those things have worked. This is where we come in. At Sculpt by Science, we consider us the company that in case of emergency break glass, our clients come to us when they've tried different things and it didn't work for them and they want a guaranteed result. We are a team of medical professionals. It is myself as the head, Dr. Zeno, all medical professionals who help you in fixing all of these symptoms, losing the weight, improving your energy, doubling your energy, regaining that confidence and fixing those things that the medical doctors just couldn't because they don't have knowledge on the things that you need to be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. They just want to give you medications and you don't want to do that. These are the clients who made a decision and joined us. They're business owners, they're executives, they are doctors, they're in tech, they work at Apple, Microsoft. I highly recommend to come through our door. We are a premium product, but we do guarantee the results. And these are the people that we wanna to speak to. We wanna save your time. So if you don't fall under these categories, then do not apply. And if that's you, if you fall into the categories and you feel like I'm speaking to you right now and you're conf and you feel that we can help you, then in the link of the description of this video, book a call, fill out the short application, and you'll either speak to myself, to my wife, who's our chief operating officer, to Dr. Zeno or Coach Max. You will speak to one of us and we will be able to help you. But you need to be ready to take action so you can finally get results. We want to save your time and ours. But let's move on into the video. So this is why I'm such a big proponent for intermittent fasting. Because when you're eating in this eight hour window state, you're only spiking your insulin levels within this period and the rest is fasted. So because in the morning you can have water, sparkling water, tea and caffeine or coffee as a source. These are very, very low in calories. Even if it's just 10 calories, your insulin levels will remain low, consequently allowing lipolysis to happen. I will eat between 12 and eight o'clock, right? These foods that I'm about to share with you. And then I won't eat beyond 8 PM. Again, when you decide to break your fast and have your fast can shift, but this is the meals that I'm having, right? And that's one stage, stage one, intermittent fasting, right? This allows me to regulate, okay, when am I going to spike insulin and when I'm not going to spike insulin? So this is the first rule of this very simple diet. Now, again, I need to emphasize guys, weight gain and weight loss is all about calories in calories out. This here on the left side shows you how to calculate your TDEE. -E. It's the total daily energy expenditure. It's the total amount of calories your body's burning. And you just need to make sure that you're eating less to be in a caloric deficit and for you to lose weight. And this photo here shows you, this is the mathematical equation we calculate. And this photo shows you how all these things factor into being 100% of all the energy, your basal metabolic rate, the energy required to keep your body alive, your NEAT, all of these things. And for you to lose weight, you need to eat less than the energy that your body's expending. So if you're expending, burning your body in 24 hours, 300, 3000, if we could calculate it to lose a pound, you want to eat 2,500. This will always remain true. But these different diet styles take advantage of this information and you'll drop weight, right? And again, this just emphasizes this. This is from the food we're eating to still lose fat. We still need to eat less, but I'm going to show you how to make this simple and easy using the science. The second thing, apart from fasting, right? We're going to fast in the 16, eight window. We're going to eat a lot of protein. And these are proteins benefits. Number one, muscle growth and repair. Protein is essential for building and repairing muscle tissue. It's particularly important for athletes, bodybuilders, and individuals. It also has its function in immune repair, right? Protein is crucial for proper function of the immune system in terms of the antibodies, which help fight off infections. It has support with your structure. Protein like collagen, keratin, elastin provides structural support to cells, your tissue, and your organs, right? It will also affect your metabolism. When your body breaks down protein, it takes the most work for your body to break it down, which means your body's burning more calories digesting protein. 
In science, we call this the thermic effect of food. That's just a sexy way of saying your body takes the most energy, which consequently boosts your metabolism. So that's another reason why we're eating high protein. The two big ones helps with muscle repair. The second one, it will boost your metabolism. Fifth, weight management. Protein can aid in weight management by promoting satiety. It's also amazing for aging. Adequate protein intake is important for maintaining muscle mass and strength as we age, helping to prevent sarcopenia, age-related muscle loss, right, and bone health. But let's talk about protein and hunger. This is why this is the second rule, is a high-protein diet, right? And now a lot of you guys may be like, Mike, I know all of this. So let's talk about protein and its hormonal effects. Protein increases the levels of the satiety hormones such as peptide YY and glucagon-like peptide 1, which reduces the levels of the hunger hormone ghrelin. This hormonal balance helps support suppressing appetite and promoting this feeling of fullness. This is why we want to eat more protein. You're going to eat less. Consequently, this is why people are taking a Zempic. It makes them eat less. And it actually does the same, almost the same effect as a Zempic with the GLP, it being a GLP-1 analog. So a high protein diet will have a similar effect. I'm going to show you how high. Again, the thermic effect of food, your body will burn the most calories digesting protein. So the more protein you eat, the more you boost your metabolism. It will impact your blood sugar levels. Protein will help stabilize blood sugar levels by slowing down the absorption of sugar into the bloodstream. Stable blood sugar levels can prevent sudden hunger pangs and energy crashes that often lead to overeating. Slower digestion. Protein takes longer to digest than carbohydrates, which means it stays in your stomach for longer and prolongs the feeling of fullness. And finally, it increased satiety. Protein-rich foods often require more chewing, which can increase the production of saliva and gastric juices, leading to longer lasting fullness. With this diet, it is a very, very high protein diet. On the lower end, 0.8 grams per pound. This is the normal recommended amount. So if you had a high body fat, if you're 30%, usually 0.8 grams per pound. What you'll hear everywhere is one gram per pound of protein. So if you're gonna take the advice here, start at that one gram per pound of protein. For myself, because I was so hungry, even 1.2 grams of protein per pound of body weight wasn't enough. And I have gone as high as 1.7 grams of protein per pound of body weight with what I've done. And it's because I wanted to avoid the hunger. I wanted to get rid of it. But these are the risks. If you have a history with a kidney condition or a liver condition, then you probably cannot eat this high protein. Do not take this as medical advice. Go and see your own family practitioner about how much protein you can consume. But I went as high as 1.6. With my clients, I'll usually keep them at that one point, at that one gram. Sometimes I'll go as high as 1.3, depending on if they're telling me, hey, Mike, I'm very hungry. But I wanted to take advantage of all those benefits of feeling full that I would get from eating protein, right? This is why the keto diet became so popular. It's because keto would keep you so full because of all the protein and fat that you're consuming. So on this diet, what are the protein sources that you can eat? Number one is steak. Steak is an excellent source of a complete protein. It provides the essential amino acids you need for muscle growth and repair. Some people consider steak to be a superfood, right? It's rich in micronutrients like iron. Steak contains heme iron, which is more easily absorbed by the body than non-heme iron found in plants. Iron is essential for the production of hemoglobin and myoglobin protein that carries oxygen in the blood. Zinc, important for immune function, DNA synthesis, and wound healing. Vitamin B12 is essential for nerve function, red blood blood cell formation and DNA synthesis. And there's other vitamins in there, as you guys can see. Vitamin B6, and I, uh, B3, riboflavin, which supports energy metabolism and brain health. Creatine, it's naturally found in red meat and creatine is beneficial for muscle energy production. And it's often used as a supplement as well, but you can get that in red meat, right? It also has healthy fats. Lean cuts of steak, like strip loin, provide a good balance of saturated and unsaturated fats. Grass-fed beef in particular, tend to have higher levels of omega-3 fats fatty acids and conjugated linoleic acid. You may have heard of CLA, which is also linked to various health benefits. But these are a few things that you should consider with a steak is the saturated fat and the cholesterol. While lean cuts are lower in saturated fat, regular consumption of fatty cuts of steak can contribute to high saturated fat intake, which may impact your heart health. It's important to balance steak consumption with other protein sources and maintain the diet rich in fruits and different vegetables. Let's also go into chicken, right? Chicken is another amazing protein source that you can use 
use on this simple diet and I'm going to show you how to bring it together. High quality chicken, particularly chicken breast is also another excellent source as your protein source of lean essential amino acids. It's low in fat. Skinless chicken breast is very low in fat and calories compared to other meats, making it great. And it also reduces your fat intake. But on this diet, you can use chicken thighs or drumsticks, right, to get your source of fats. But chicken is going to be another one. What chicken also has is that it has um, vitamin B6, which supports energy metabolism and brain health. Niacin, as I've talked about, important for your DNA repair and so on. What's also great about having chicken, right, and again, you can go steak or chicken, is that it's very versatile. You can use chicken in such in many different ways. But this is what you need to consider with chicken is the antibiotics and the hormones in chicken, right? Choose organic or antibiotic free chicken to avoid exposure to antibiotics and hormones that are sometimes used in conventional farming. So especially in the U.S., Make sure you're getting organic chicken and make sure that you're cooking it healthily, right? You're baking it or you're grilling it. This is the ideal way. Going in an air fryer for me is the way to go with chicken. Uh, salmon like steak and chicken is a complete protein with excellent sources of omega fatty acids. It's one of the best dietary sources of these fatty acids, which is crucial for your heart health, your brain health and reducing inflammation. It has an array of vitamins and minerals like vitamin D. Salmon is one of the few natural food sources with vitamin D, which is important for your bone health, immune function and your overall mood. It also contains selenium, which is important for your thyroid and also antioxidant defense. So again, amazing to have into your diet. So chicken, salmon, and also steak are going to be the three protein sources we want to utilize and a high protein source. And just to make sure with salmon, salmon generally has lower mercury levels compared to a larger predatory fish. And just the point with salmon, guys, salmon does have a lower mercury level compared to larger predatory fish. It's important to choose wild caught or responsibly farmed salmon to minimize the exposure to mercury overall, right? So opt for those sustainable sources. Just make sure when you're ordering ask for this in particular and then finally eggs is an excellent protein source providing all the essential amino acids necessary for muscle growth and repair one large egg will contain about six grams of protein again rich in vitamins and minerals right like b6 right which b6 it also has riboflavin b2 again another amazing one but to consider your considerations that you need to have with eggs is you need to just pay attention to the amount that you're consuming for the fat content and cholesterol Something to consider with eggs, guys, is do pay attention to the fat content. It's high in cholesterol, one age containing about 186 milligrams. However, research does suggest that dietary cholesterol has less impact on blood cholesterol levels for most people, more than you think. Again, moderation is key, right? And just watch out for the amount of eggs that you're consuming. All of these protein sources I've mentioned contain a healthy amount of fats that you need to monitor on this plan that I'm going to share with you guys. So finally, in terms of our sources of fats, I want you guys to pick avocados. It's rich in monosaturated fats, particularly oleic acid, which is known for its heart health benefits, including reducing bad LDL cholesterol levels and increasing good HDL cholesterol levels. Has amazing profile in terms of vitamin and minerals. Vitamin K, which is important for blood clotting and bone health. Vitamin E, acts as an antioxidant, protects yourself from damage. And vitamin C, it supports your immune function, your skin health, and acts as an antioxidant. B12, which also includes folate, which is crucial for the division and DNA synthesis as well as B6 and so, so much more. What's also amazing about having more avocado into your diet again, avocados are excellent source of fiber, which is about 10 grams of fiber per avocado. Fiber aids in your digestion and I really need, you really need some sort of fiber source to maintain healthy blood sugar levels as well and can help you not have a hard time when you're going to the bathroom. Finally, another fat source that I'd use is peanut butter. Now try and get with no sugar added. You can get nut butter as a result, but this is another food that I had in the diet. And I wanted to share this with you guys. Now you've seen the protein sources, an easy way to be able to have a tally of how much protein you're consuming is what I developed called the two, six, eight, 10 method. Two scoops of protein will give you 50 grams of protein. And yes, on this diet, you can have that. Six ounces of cooked chicken breast will give you 50 grams of protein. Eight ounces of steak cooked will give you 50 grams of protein. 10 ounces of tuna or any fish will give you 50 grams of protein. Now you have an easy way to remember how much protein you're consuming. Two, six, eight, 
10. Now you know how to be able to hit your protein intake. So if you're 200 pounds and you want to hit 200 grams for breakfast, you can have a shake, two scoops. For lunch, you can have six ounces of cooked chicken breast. For dinner, you can have a eight ounce steak. And let's say as a snack, you can just have a can of tuna that is about 10 ounces and you're good to go in terms of hitting your 200 grams. So now we've covered our protein sources. What about our carbohydrate sources? What we'll go for is different levels of peppers, red pepper, green pepper, and we will have yellow pepper and we will make a salad utilizing this. And they obviously contain so many different benefits, right? They're low calorie, they're amazing as a fiber source, and they contain multiple, multiple different vitamins that are extremely important. A, E, K, there's B6 and so on. Cherry tomatoes to add into your salad. Again, amazing antioxidant profile. You're getting all the vitamins that you need. Cherry tomatoes compared to the bell peppers are sweeter. So for that different taste in your salad that you'll include, but cherry tomatoes are amazing to go for. You can add regular tomatoes, totally up to you. Cucumbers. Now compared to all the other veggies that I've shared with you, definitely does have less nutrition. It is 95% water, but it can really add that volume to your salad. So cucumber is amazing to go for. And spring onion. This is something that I'll add and you'll see now in the video, I'm going to show you how I prepared mine, right? How I prepare my meals. But just to give you guys a take of how to follow this diet plan. So there's going to be two main meals and a snack. And I have this snack usually with my meal. We're going to choose one protein source between steak, fish and chicken or eggs and have a salad with that as meal one. And then as a snack, while I'm having that for something sweet, I'll have either a tablespoon of peanut butter. Meal two, the same thing. Again, a protein source of your choice, steak, fish or chicken and a lot of it and then a salad. That is the meal to follow. And these meals you can order anywhere. You can order steak at any restaurant and you can order fish, grilled salmon at any restaurant, or you can order grilled chicken at any restaurant. Just make sure you're having as much as you would like so that you can feel full. So sometimes in my case, I may ask two portions of steak or two portions of salmon. And if they're going to give you any of these add ons like pesto or butter, tell them to put it to the side. So meal one, choose your protein source and a salad. Meal two, choose your protein source and a salad. And as a snack, you can have peanut butter. I've been having PB2. And this is what keeps my diet so high protein is you guys can see my carbohydrate intake is very low, low carb and a good amount amount of fats from the protein source, from the steak, from the fish, the eggs, and also some peanut butter as something for the sweet tooth. And again, remember the two, six, eight, 10 method. And now let's transition guys into showing you how I prepare these meals and I'll leave it there. This is a diet I created for myself. I wanted to do two things. I wanted to save my time, but I wanted to stop feeling hungry. I just came post show and I was still feeling hungry eating the carbs, but I was also feeling that I didn't feel energetic in the afternoon once I broke my fast. So this is a keto slash protein satiating diet so it's not full keto but i call it tmad and i call it the ceo diet it's a two meal a day diet because number one yes the foods here can be costly but it's so quick to perform and it's so quick to do and you can eat this eating out right so ceos are always going out for dinner and for lunch this is exactly what you eat so now some of my clients i put them on this diet because it makes decision making easy, but also because there's not too many carbohydrates in this meal. Again, I'm not saying don't eat carbs. You guys know I love carbohydrates, but the more carbs you're eating, the more it does make you feel sleepier, right? The tryptophan and the car carbohydrates can induce serotonin, which can also produce more melatonin. This is why you may be feeling sleepier in the evening. So to keep my clients sharp and keep myself sharp, I go high protein, high fat, very low carb, and I'm gonna show you how to prepare. So number one, Right, we're gonna start with the salads, right? And I already spoke to you guys about the non starchy veggies and the benefits of it. And the salad I'm gonna prepare now is going to be for lunch and dinner. So you're gonna see this, I'm gonna prepare it once. And then here are the steaks that I'm gonna eat. And I also wanna show you guys how quick it is to prepare this meal. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna time how long it's gonna take. I'm not even gonna rush it for the sake of the video, but I'm just gonna show you how quick it is. And I, again, I call it the CEO diet because it should be for people who are wanting to eat something quickly on the go and they don't wanna spend time in the kitchen. So I'll hit start and I'm just gonna cut some veggies and I'll chat to you guys while I do it, right? So. I'm going to be using the red pepper, green pepper, some cucumber, and also some cherry tomatoes. You can use any non-starchy veggies that you like. And I absolutely love this. Now, when I first started this diet, I didn't have the veggies in there. So if you just do the meat or the protein source, 
you're gonna find going to the bathroom quite difficult. So having the salad in there just really helps with digestion as well. Um, the reason I also decided to do this is um, I did a blood test. I saw that I was tested positive for antibodies of Helicobacter pylori, right, H. pylori. And basically that was giving me heartburn. Long story short, I had to take antibiotics to get rid of the H. pylori and I did, but I wanted to, you know, antibi antibiotics kill your gut microbiome. And I wanted to make sure that my meals are as colorful as possible so I can enrich my micro microflora. And now I'm just cutting up the bell peppers. And again, this will be my salad for two of the meals. So here we go. By the way guys, wash your veggies. And for those who don't like salads, if you watch my channel, you see I'm not always the one to make salads, but the way I make this one is fantastic. It tastes so good. So I'll show you guys the dressing I use and all of it. And I, the hope is that you guys just literally copy me that's the whole goal of this video. Copy what I'm doing and you'll see the weight fly off for two reasons. Your insulin levels will be low. We know low insulin will promote lipolysis, right? Granted that you're in a caloric deficit, but the protein is gonna help you with that. So you don't necessarily have to track, but obviously for me, it's a habit, right? I'm already, I already have the habit of tracking. And you guys can use onions if you like. You can use regular tomatoes if you prefer that. And you can also add some leaves in there, right? So you can add some iceberg lettuce if you like, totally up to you. Same to go with fish. If you guys are pescatarian, you can totally just use salmon or any white fish, cod, uh, mahi mahi. If you're a CEO, you're very busy and you want something healthy, then you can prepare this. So I haven't found a decrease in my performance output. What I also do is having a caffeine source in the morning helps me tremendously. You guys can see what I'm preparing again is just all the veggies I'm gonna have for meal one and meal two. I do what's according to the science and what's convenient for me in the moment. When you're on holiday, you're not veering off too much from what you're already eating and I found myself to maintain my physique really well. And the reason I had the cheesecake was again, I was on holiday and that was a reward. And you don't come back from holiday with 10 pounds up, you come the exact same weight. So that's what I liked about this as well. If you're someone who travels a lot, you can go to any restaurant, eat the same thing you always eat. And usually with carbohydrate foods, let's say a mashed potato, you don't know how much butter they're putting in. You don't know how much flour they're putting in. But with a steak, you can't mess up a steak. Same with a salmon, unless there's like pesto or so many other ingredients, but you can see. So that's all my salad done, right? So considering you make your salad, it takes you 10 minutes. Salad done. And I'm gonna stop here. Now, the main meal, I'm gonna show you guys. So that just took 10 minutes to prepare my salad for lunch and dinner. Let's consider this five minutes, right? Now I'm gonna make my main meal. What I am using is strip loin, right? A leaner cut or one of the leaner cuts. I have the fat, the fat will make me feel very full. It will give me what I need in terms of satiety, also in terms of my testosterone production and then my the meats for the protein source. So let me show you how long this is gonna take, right? Start. Okay, so I'm just gonna weigh, right? Because this is habit for me. So that's 214, that's 409 in grams and 609 let me tell you how much that is in ounces 609 right so i'm just gonna leave it there i'll put it on the screen how many steaks this is in ounces so 609 when you prepare your steaks you can totally use butter if you want but i'm just gonna use the spray awesome and here we go is this a keto diet? Part of me wants to say no. We can call it a post protein satiating diet, but it's a balance between everything. It's a simple way that has remnants of keto. And that's three minutes in and now we just wait. So let me mix this up while we wait. But I just wanted to be very clear showing you guys how I prepare this. So I'm just mixing this up, right? Now, the first thing is I don't track veggies. You digest them mostly and they don't really add. So I just make a whole plate full. Um, you can add some white um, vinegar. You can add balsamic vinegar, any vinegar of your choice. And then I'm going to add some Perinase for some taste. And again, you don't have to track. You can just go by eye. But I just like tracking because that's a habit. Honestly, the Perinase makes this taste fantastic. Lovely. Salad, 
is done. And now we wait for the steak. And while that's going, guys, for all of you guys who say tracking takes too long, see, I didn't track anything, right? And you can just do that and just do it consistently. The app I've been using recently is Chronometer, but I'll, I'll go here, I'll click add food, and I've been taking this um, 619, we track 609, so put 609. And the macros for the three steaks is 773 calories, that's 129 grams of protein, 2.4 carb, 27.4 fat. Now, I'll definitely get people saying, oh, that's too much protein in a sitting. I'm not having any digestive issues. It's consistent, right? So I don't see any variation in my digestion. So I find it to be fine. I can digest that. Turn that side around. I'm happy with that. Just to keep it consistent. And the macros of this meal comes out to be 130 protein, 8.4 grams of carbs, and 34.1 grams of fat. And let's see how we're doing for time. Seven minutes, 38 seconds. And I'm not in a particular rush, right? But I just wanted to show you guys, for you busy people out there, okay, Mike, what's something I can do, not worry about? And you can pack this and take it to work too, but depends on how you like your steaks. So I'm gonna do it one by one. I like mine medium, all right? Boom. Look at that. All right, so tell me what you guys think of that consistency. That's how I like my steaks. What do you call that, KK? Medium rare. or medium rare? It's rare. That's rare? Yeah. I like them like that. And I mean, you can leave it on there for a bit longer. No, this is perfect. Yeah. Like, I, I would have this 100%. Hell yeah. What time is it, KK? It's exactly 10 minutes in. 10 minutes, man, and okay. that's it. I never want to hear from you, I don't have time. Never. You have time for things that are important to you. Again, the protein will keep you satiated, right? So um, I also say this to my clients when they're about to go out, you know, for a family dinner, they're gonna go out and they're gonna be social. I say, hey, before you go out, have steak or have a fish so you can feel full so you don't go and eat or drink nonsense because you're gonna feel satiated. It's the same, don't go shopping hungry, right? Just, this helps you and that's it. My meals are done. See you tomorrow. Kidding, I'll see you guys for meal number two but um, yeah, that's my meal essentially. 10 minutes, CEO died two meals a day and I ate the same. Personally, I'm gonna eat this again later. So meal number two and we have our three steaks. I'm gonna turn on the pan. Some palm spray. We have strip sirloin steak. One, two, three. Time to weigh the steaks. 189. 381. 595 for all three steaks. 595. And now cook. Perfect, so four minutes, 58 seconds, and preparing my salad. I'm gonna get this to about 35 grams. 35 grams on the dot. And then let's see if it's time to turn the steak around, and yes it is. Beautiful. So this is meal number two for me. It's my last meal of the evening. And I'm also gonna have a snack that I'm gonna show you guys that I like having for my sweet tooth. I'm gonna add some salt here. Lovely, so salads are ready. And then just the steak. Nine minutes in. How's that consistency look? Mm.
And that's it. That took 11 minutes. Dinner served, right? We have our salad and our steaks. Let's show the steaks I'm loving. That's it.